this morning has been you know with senators and oversight and the job that oversight uh, is being done at the senate level by over on uh, those oversight committees of the senate now we want to talk about now this whole issue of first of all implementing this constitution entrenching institutions that have been created by the constitution and safeguarding and promoting democracy in the country and we are now joined by somebody who is a top legal mind who is currently serving as a judge of the East African Court of Justice and has previously served as the first and only chairman of the one and only Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Charles Nichai. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Karibu sana to Kenya. Shukran. Shukran. It's a hot seat of the Situation Room. Okay. <laughs> so you remember those days when as a CIC used to be summoned by Parliament? Yes. By the Committee for the Implementation of the Constitution. And they ask you, where are the bills, Buana? We are running out of time. And you'd say, you know, we've drafted the bill, but we're having issues now with uh, one or two understanding one another. That's, that's the kind of conversation we want to have now. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, un to understand where we are. Okay. Karibu sana. Asante sana. The gentleman who looks like you here with the grey chin and <laughs> face. <laughs> Uh, has a day's proverb from Burkina Faso. <laughs> yes, our proverbs for the whole of this week come from the country of Burkina Faso mm. and our weekends too on Friday. Mm. If you haven't been to two marketplaces, you don't know what the best value is. If you haven't been to two marketplaces, mm. you don't know what the best value is. Judge, you what's your interpretation of that proverb uh, uh, first of all because i'm a good christian yeah. let me mm. confess that uh, when i was getting ready yeah. in the morning i was watching katie and, and I, I saw that question asked to senator Fanier, w or Matinga. Matinga. yes mm. yes um my my understanding of it is in a way uh, similar to what i understood him to be saying. Mm. Namely, I think it's encouraging uh, open broad-mindedness. I mean, yeah, if you are in a particular environment, you may think that's, that's the world as it is. And uh, uh, base your thinking and your actions on that. But I think what the proverb is saying is that, you know, look at uh, beyond a little more so that you you understand there are other perspectives there are other ways of looking at uh, life and uh, situations and and uh, all that you encounter mm. that that's generally speaking what i think it's about mm. city mm. from one charles to another mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you two having fun uh, about that. <laughs> huh? I mean, you're stuck on this grey beard and the similarity of names. Uh, you're really, you're really yeah. stuck on that, aren't you? <laughs> and the two, look at the way the two of you are beaming. He's okay. a judge of the East Africa Court of Justice. <laughs> you're the judge of the Situation Room. <laughs> well, since you have bequeathed that particular task, mm. that um, if I were back to my old uh, stomping grounds as a teacher, how would I mark it? Same. As? 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> One for future One use. One for future use. <laughs> <laughs> when you come across an exam that doesn't favor you, you know those exams you can use where it then. <laughs> they, they don't set the things you studied. Uh, no, yes, those ones. Uh, yeah. You wonder why didn't I study this? Why didn't they set this? I so, to Charles, but the classic way of uh, dealing with that, uh, Charles, <laughs> yes. is. Uh, is to tweak the question so that it now becomes your question. <laughs> and you answer it. And start answering your question. <laughs> <laughs> we have had conversations with uh, people representing various institutes, institutions hmm. in the East Africa community. We've uh, talked to the head of the secretariat, the uh, secretary general. Mm -hmm. We've talked to two, three now members of the East Africa Legislative Assembly. Now we're honored to talk to a judge of the East African Court of Justice. Explain to us the job that this court does before we move into Kenya and evolution and and democracy. Oh, okay. Um, well, basically, the 
uh, East African community, as is now, was uh, re re-established, and I use the word re-established advisedly. Uh, I think it was in 1999, after about 20 years or so, since the previous East African community had, for a number of reasons, uh, run aground. And uh, that was done by what we call the Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community, uh, which basically creates uh, uh, three organs and a number of institutions, the organs uh, uh, being the Secretariat, uh, the East African Legislative Assembly, which is the legislative arm of the community, mm -hmm. and the East African Court of Justice. In a nutshell, the uh, role of the East African Court of Justice is uh, to interpret the treaty. Uh, it, it has ex exclusive jurisdiction to interpret the treaty for the establishment well, let's just call it the treaty, mm -hmm. and to enforce the treaty. So, generally speaking, uh, the jurisdiction of the court is to uh, listen to any allegations uh, that the treaty has been violated, and to, like any court, to uh, address the uh, allegation between whoever the parties are. The parties uh, have to be uh, a resident of this African uh, uh, community mm -hmm. and on the other side uh, either a partner state or the community itself mm. uh, as, a, as, as a body. So basically, in, 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 in a nutshell, to answer your question, <coughs> the role of the court is to interpret and enforce uh, the treaty. Matters around the treaty. Matters around the treaty. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's now come back to Kenya. Okay. We have a constitution. Mm -hmm. Kenyans went and queued one day in August. Thank you. And the majority of them voted yes to the then draft constitution. Mm -hmm. Then they promulgated the constitution and it's a colorful ceremony at Uhuru Park. We, the people, give unto ourselves this new constitution. We called it the birth of the Second Republic, and we celebrated. The constitution created one institution and told that institution, you are going to midwife this constitution. The Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution, given the job of actually looking at what needed to breathe life into the constitution in terms of legislative statutes, and you were appointed chairman together with your commissioners, you did a lot of work of understanding the constitution, understanding the letter and spirit of the constitution, and translating that into the various bills that you took to parliament that are then enacted to implement the constitution. So question, Charles, 13 years down the road, are we implementing our constitution um, as it was designed by Kenyans, or have we slowed down, or did we stop implementing this thing? Oh, that's many questions <laughs> rolled into one. Um, I don't think we have stopped implementing the Constitution. On the other hand, I would be reluctant to say that we have continued to implement the Constitution in the manner that I believe the, the, both the, the framers of the Constitution as well as the people of, uh, of Kenya, when they promulgated the, uh, the constitution, contemplated. Let me try and ex explain that uh, uh, briefly. Mm. The reason I say I don't think that we have stopped Im implementing the constitution is because <clears throat> I always said when I was uh, in the commission that uh, the, two things. One, the 2010 constitution, uh, by any standards, whether we are comparing it with our previous constitution, what we call the former constitution, whether we are comparing with the former constitution, or whether we are comparing it with other constitutions around the world, 
the constitution of Kenya 2010 uh, is can can be described as uh, uh, radical and transformative mm. by, by by any standards, which means that it was always going to be a challenge to to uh, to implement. Mm. And that is exactly the experience uh, that we had. And I think, I do believe that's why the framers of the Constitution uh, put in the various um, uh, transitional provisions and institutions that they did, the foremost of which was uh, uh, the commission in, in, in which I served, the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution, whose job was to uh, oversee uh, and coordinate, you know, because that constitution is not self-executing. Mm. So it, it, it needed in a number of ways, the primary one of which, of course, is the legislation that you have referred to, mm. which was uh, a, a collaborative, uh, designed to be collaborative between uh, our co then commission, mm -hmm. the the Attorney General, yeah. and uh, Parliament uh, itself. Mm -hmm. The Attorney General in that sense representing also the, the uh, executive. Now, as to, f f for, for reasons which I probably cannot speak authoritatively, uh, Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Same one. <laughs> uh, Charles, city, city deal right. with it, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah. The the for 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 reasons that uh, I cannot uh, pretend to fully understand, mm -hmm. I think at the end of the five years uh, period. Uh, which um, the, the 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 framers of the constitution had sort of like um, expected it to be the uh, 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 the implementation period, yeah. which, with the benefit of hindsight, was probably overly ambitious. It was too uh, short. Oh, it was too short. Mm. In fact, if, if when I look back now. I, I think the the the, the entire uh, process or the, the 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 mechanism for implementing the constitution mm. uh, should probably have had a, a, a minimum of uh, maybe a twenty year period. Wow. Mm. Um, not necessarily the same players. Mm. Uh, I, I certainly, with the experience that I, 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 I <laughs> had, wouldn't with, want to be. There I wouldn't the want and. Uh, uh, those who made the decision wouldn't have wanted me anyway. But that, that, that came with the territory. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that came with if we were to do our job properly. Mm. But, you see, when uh, I look at it, and I was reflecting, you know, knowing I was coming here, it, it, I, I find it very sad for the country. Mm. The country spent a lot of money uh, on that whole process of implementation, on, on, on the commission itself. Mm. And uh, it's a fact that uh, the exit report, the final report of CIC, was never even discussed in Parliament. Of course, they had not discussed any of the quarterly <laughs> reports for five years. But one would have thought that at least, you know... The, at least they take uh, it, Parliament, look at what you've uh, said, uh, yeah. and then come up with a mechanism to ensure it, that all your recommendations are taken into account I I your lessons yes, are, yes, are also absolutely. taken yes you know uh, and and even with that five year period eh, hmm. one would have expected that uh, parliament itself as as um, the the four core institution beyond the five years by the way they had an option to extend the, 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 the mechanism of uh, of uh, what would you call it? Um, CIC. Uh, yeah. And the other implementation. That was, that was one, one option they had. The other option they had was do not extend the life of CIC, but uh, empower another institution, whether it is the Kenya Law Reform Commission yeah. or whatever. The third option was really all this work to be uh, carried out, monitored, 
uh, and and, uh, and 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 uh, coordinated by the parliamentary committee, the, the the what we call the CIOC, the committee for you know uh, the, the CI the the committee for implementation, for the implementation of the oversight of the, of the yeah. Mm. Okay. But this, none of this seems to have happened. Yeah. So that's that's why I, I feel that <coughs> whatever has happened in terms of implementation has been whatever was able to ha to have picked a life of its own, so mm. to speak. Uh, so, yeah. so, Charles, <laughs> when you said you don't think we have stopped implementing, yes. The constitution is implementing itself. We yeah, are not. That's that's basically <laughs> yeah. That's uh, we are not because there's no deliberate effort at looking at this is what we should yeah, be doing. Yeah. These are the timelines or the milestones that we should have hit by this time, mm. and let's actually get towards yeah. realizing these milestones or hitting those deadlines. There's no deliberate effort on it. Yeah, so yeah. if things are happening, things are happening just. Um, because some work had been done, because some, yeah. and, and therefore momentum. there was some momentum, and that that's the momentum. That and is. others are, ne are then coming from the from yeah. the courts. Yeah. So this, matters the, go to court, and then the court says, yes, yeah, yes. do something." The, the, sorry. Do you see? Uh, I mean, because we can't run away from the side that politics plays in all of this. Because for what you said, in terms of what has been implemented, do you see that perhaps those who then were responsible? for the implementation that has occurred so far legislatively it has played to their desire or priority at the time anything that has not been implemented so far or any attitude that shows you know the lack of the will to implement is because it carries the political agenda of the day would you see something like that as a possibility <laughs> What I would see is what I would describe as a, a maybe um, a general conservatism across the board, mm. which would include what you have just described. And when I go back to uh, 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 2011, when we we actually started uh, uh, the, 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 the the process of of implementing the constitution. Understandably and predictably, there, there was a fair amount of uh, resistance across the board. Mm -hmm. And there was also a fair amount of, um, not necessarily resistance, but, you know, we got a lot of, you know, from the people we were dealing a lot of, you know, uh, we we are no, we know it. This is we we know how things are done. We've always done things, and it has worked. That that's that 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 sort of approach. Now, we therefore uh, interestingly, interestingly, the the you see there are things that if you look at the the, the constitution of Kenya 2010 vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the the former constitution. And that's why our constitution, by the way, is just a big document because it tried to address a lot of very specific ills mm -hmm. or what had been identified as ills over a period of time. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. The, 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 when you look at the uh, Salaries and Remuneration Commission, uh, uh, mm -hmm. SRC, as an independent constitutional commission, in, under the former constitution, the the uh, uh, of course the the only body which which uh, had uh, the leeway and habit of uh, uh, setting their own salaries and remuneration uh, were the legislators. Yeah. And that is when I look at the mind of the uh, uh, framers of the constitution, that is what was being addressed. When we started implementing that, and to date, I don't think it has ever been accepted <laughs> by them. Yeah. And yet that was a very intention. It's a, the whole intention was to make sure that there's somebody else <laughs> yes. who determines how much you pay. Exactly. <laughs> so so, so uh, a number of these things, uh, you know, were, uh, uh, the, the, you know, institutions and mm. offices and so on felt that the, 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 the 
a raw nerve was being touched yeah. now insofar as they were concerned. So we got uh, 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 the resistance. Now, the point that do you got your your yes. goods? Right. Yes. Yeah. The, the 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 point that you're making is absolutely uh, uh, correct, Be but I, I'm just saying it's part of the, the bigger uh, uh, resistance mm. that uh, political players also along the line, uh, where they felt that uh, their their interests. Uh, were affected one way or another, mm. were unwilling to, you know, to let go. You know, to cede ground, even to compromise. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and and I I I hope you will not go too much into the direction of what I am about to mention, but I just give it an example. <laughs> the current. Uh, the, the, this whole process about. Uh, by partisan. Uh, no, I. I <laughs> <laughs> That's the direction Eric wants to go to. <laughs> IBC. Yes. And how you how you appoint, yeah. Mm -hmm. Commissioners. Yeah, the the the, the how you constitute the body. Even from day one, that time, and that was a time when people, you know, despite uh, the 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 resistance that I've talked about. The, 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 there was a fair amount of goodwill towards the, the, the then uh, new constitution. Mm. But still, that was a big problem, even at that time. Mm. Why? Because of the uh, uh, dynamics of interests of uh, uh, political players, it's just as an example. Okay, we will not. <laughs> but now on the matter of IEBC. <laughs> <laughs> now that we are not going in that direction. we are not going in that direction, <laughs> yes. But Charles. I, I get a sense. Yeah. Okay, constitution is yeah. this sort of covenant yeah. between the people yeah. and the people whom they give the authority to yes. lead them. Yes. The people gave themselves a constitution. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they participated in that whole process from Ufungamano into Yashval Guy into going to Bomas into having the, you know, the particular discussions in whatever fora, culminating in the promulgation of the constitution. Yeah. Then the political leader was also playing a part mm. and a role mm. in this whole thing. Mm. Do I get the sense, and am I right to actually say that I get a sense that this covenant that was supposed to be between two parties was then overtaken or taken over by one party, and that is the rulers who want to determine how they want to rule, and in the name of saying that they understand how the people want them to rule. So the voice of the people is over time being suppressed and this power dynamic shifts more and more to the governors. I, I think it's a little more complex than that, uh, mm. Erika, because the starting point, you're, you're absolutely true, uh, right. And, and it remains that a constitution is basically uh, a covenant between, uh, between the people themselves and then the, the 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 those that the people um, delegate, because mm. if you look at the constitution, mm. uh, whether you're talking of uh, executive power, legislative power, or judicial power, it's the people delegating to the various yeah. uh, institutions. So that's what it is. But in my view, two things then happen over a period of time. Uh, one is uh, essentially uh, what you have said. The, 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 those, those that are to whom power has been delegated, either legislative power or uh, executive power, mm. and, and, and uh, to a large extent, I, I, I would leave the judiciary aside. Uh, for a minute, because I hold the view that, uh, by and large, the judiciary have uh, executed the power delegated to them by the people, mm. uh, by and large, with fidelity. Yes, by and large. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm not giving them. You're not giving them 100 percent. No. 
or no, one or no, eleven like city. No, no. Mm. no. <laughs> but they're giving but, them a pass mark. But by and by. Yeah. But what has happened in my view over a period of time, the other the other organs uh, of state have p developed uh, courage to claw back. You know, when we started uh, 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 the implementation of the constitution. Uh, the, 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 you, 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 you could see that the organs of government really, despite that conservatism and, and the resistance, mm -hmm. they, they, they were resisting in a very, uh, initially, very, very coy sort of way. Why? Because they knew that the people of Kenya uh, supported that constitution. Yeah. And the people of Kenya wanted... Uh, implementation of that constitution affected mm. over a period of time the uh, 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 those to whom uh, power has been delegated uh, have uh, gotten courage in very subtle ways to mm. uh, 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 claw back and unfortunately I think uh, Onjiko being more concerned with uh, maybe matters like food on the table, food on the table, and so on, mm. has sort of like uh, pulled back. And uh, so Onjiko has been distracted, yes, and focusing on other things that are you know more immediate to, to her. her, yes, absolutely. And then this, yes, other, these other guys, yes, that's their more immediate thing to them, absolutely. <laughs> so they are that's, all focused. That's, that's my view. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a break on this note. 23 minutes to 10. Charles Nyachai was the chairman of the commission for the implementation of the constitution. He is currently serving as a judge of the East African Court of Justice. We are talking about implementation of the constitution, entrenching institutions, and promoting and protecting democracy in the country. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. And the conversation continues with the Honorable Charles Nyachai, Judge of the East African Court of Justice and the former Chairman of the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution, Buonamuga. Yes, you know, every time I think of the Constitution, mm -hmm. there's a discussion of the framers of the Constitution, and then there are those like Justice mm -hmm. uh, Charles Nyachai here, who at the time was given the onus task of chairing the very process of implementing this. Now, we have devolved units. We have agriculture, which for the longest time was touted as the backbone of the economy of this country. And then we have health. Now, those are devolved functions. Mm -hmm. You see, when I think of these functions, I think, okay, the Constitution, yes, determined. But what else did the Constitution decide with regards to devolving certain functions? Because we're looking at agriculture, we're looking at how that devolution process has taken place, the complaints around that process, we're looking at health, similar complaints. The bulk of the money stays with the government, and yet the functions, as stipulated in the Constitution, are very clear. And I would argue that clarity is also restrictive in this sense. If somebody gives you autonomy but denies you the functions of policy making, then how autonomous are you, really? Does that person then not give you the semblance of autonomy and yet they're the ones who actually still hold the reins of power? I'm not sure that I agree with you. Uh, you see, th there is no function in, in, in the uh, schedule in the constitution which is, or rather, there's, there, 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 there's no, nothing that is totally devolved because there's always certain residual uh, uh, functions, especially relating to policy, mm -hmm. that the national government uh, uh, retains under the constitution. So that whether you're talking agriculture, whether you're talking uh, health, they, there's always the uh, um, functions of uh, uh, policy. Why is this? And this is why I'm saying I, I'm not sure that I would agree with you. The reason as I understand it, is that you need you need to have, for example, uh, a nationwide uh, uh, something that uniformity uniformity across mm. the board, 
And then within that, the various counties have the opportunity to uh, uh, discharge the functions as, uh, as long as they, they fall within the policy that is uh, uniform across, mm. across the country. The big challenge, eh, and I think you, you, you referred to it, is theoretically, as the constitution provides, eh, uh, funds follow the functions. But we that's one area we just don't seem to have gotten right. <laughs> because because <laughs> this case is function, <laughs> function follows form. No, 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 no. I mean, yeah, gotten I mean, right or we've <laughs> just determinedly and doggedly refused to actually understand. Because what's so complicated about it, it what's so difficult to understand? I agree. I agree with you. It shouldn't be complicated to understand. It's very simple. I mean, if if or theoretically, it's simple that if uh, delivering this particular function uh, to the people uh, would in any event cost X amount, then to uh, I mean I'm not I'm not I'm not an economist uh, or, or, or accountant or anything, but to my mind, it seems fairly simple that then those funds should follow function that has been devolved mm. but we haven't done it we, that, if we had got that right eh, uh, then then you wouldn't be hearing the the, the sort of uh, hue and cry you hear about mm. and and the, and, and the, the importance of that default is that it goes to the very heart of devolution because then even when jiko omora in the village then fails to see the value of devolution yep. because it is not delivered because uh, funds it wasn't, it wasn't uh, properly resourced it was not properly resourced now when you add on top of that the uh, uh, consistent uh, uh, problem of even the little that is uh, <laughs> provided for mm. there's always a challenge Every other day I'm seeing on the news. There's a new pocket it goes to. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday there was a story yeah. um, on KTN. The EACC had nabbed some people in Kitui County. These guys are supposed to be, you know, collecting taxes, cess out there and all. Kumbe, they are running their own racket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. yes, they do collect. Are they hustlers or entrepreneurs? Ah, both combined. <laughs> <laughs> they give you a receipt <laughs> and the receipt and the counterfoil everything matches uh. but it is not the county government's receipt book it is their own receipt book they are arrested by ESCC they're taken to the police they're released on bail they go back to the same station and continue ESCC was saying now surely <laughs> how far so you're asking you're talking about even the little that comes out, mm. if those are the stories that we keep hearing about, or this is the visibility and the largesse that we see, this guy has gone to work for the county and look at how, then it just but creates a sort of different narrative. Around, uh, there's this particular notion that mm. one reads and hears about a lifestyle audit. Okay? Mm. So, w when somebody earns 23,000 shillings and he lives in a 10 million shilling house, and he didn't inherit any money from anybody. Yeah. He didn't win any lottery. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that you know. Well, actually, he did win a lottery. He worked for, the, just, co he he worked worked for, the, for the county government. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lottery. In fact, he, he, when he applied for the job, that was him scratching the card. <laughs> he bought the card with his, his job application. <laughs> yes. Now, the, 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 the sad thing is huh, mm. that... Of course, what you have just described mm. uh, is something that for the longest time has been happening even when we just had one central government. Yep. And since the devolution, uh, you keep hearing these stories at both levels mm. of government. Mm. So that that's... that's uh, it, it's, it's very worrying. I, 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 I normally tell people that... Um, you, you know, if you read the Bible, the story of Moses and his attempt to remove the children of Israel from <laughs> Egypt, from Egypt, <laughs> and they get lost in the 
desert for 40 years. 40 years. And it reaches a stage where these guys are saying to him, you know what? Bueno, we were better off where... <laughs> I mean, logically, they were not better off where they were. No. But that's the feeling because of the experience. And that's my worry about devolution. Unfulfilled promise. That's my worry about devolution. Mm. If, if you begin to get Wanjiko feeling that, you know what? Egypt was better. Yeah. We had pumpkins. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that sort of uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. That 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 even in slavery we had food. Mm. That that could destroy um, uh, uh, devolution. Yeah. What do we say then about the institutions that were created to make sure that things work? So we remove uh, our dreams and aspirations from individuals, and we make sure that the institutions that are in place. Institution number one, like parliament as an institution and then all these independent offices and commissions and we see the things that we have seen over the last 12 years or so is it a failure of those institutions weaknesses in the structure and framework of the institutions or the people that we put in there? generally speaking my 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 own view okay let me you know some of those institutions uh for example you are to ask me today about about uh, the Senate. I I I I would probably say I I feel I feel more confident now about the Senate, the role it's playing in terms of uh, uh, what the Constitution contemplates in in protecting oversight and protecting the the interests of the counties and the, and, and, and the county governments than I was maybe. Seven years ago, when we were still uh, eight years ago, when mm. we were still uh, in, 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 the, in the commission, um, <clears throat> other institutions which are across the board, not not particularly uh, restricted to the the uh, counties or the county governments, the 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 challenge remains the same, and I think. It, it, you know, like you just gave an example. Oh no, it's Eric who gave the example of uh, ESCC. I, I, I think it has now. You now move to the the realm of what is probably the the, the biggest concern about uh, the, the 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 working of the 2010 Constitution, and and that's what we call uh, institutionalism. Uh, I mean constitutionalism, and you are now talking about people. Mm. You're talking about the the uh, belief in the constitution in letter and spirit and its intentions mm. and w the extent to which this has been inculcated in the way that things things are done one gets the sense that uh, over a period of time cic uh, kept raising uh, this issue that we 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 were making progress with things like uh, <clears throat> legislation but we were not making any progress and we included this in our exit report we were not m making any progress mm. in inculcating constitutionalism uh, and i have not seen any progress in that direction since uh, uh, we finished the what needs to happen mm. for that to well, well, the first thing which you know constitutionalism is the first thing which needs to happen is that you, you even begin with the civic education which was never done that that the framers of the constitution gave uh, that role to the uh, both levels of government that that was never done mm. but the real challenge of constitutionalism is about people both the electors and those elected. whom they elect and whom they put uh, in 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 in, in in place so it's it's very difficult to have a a checklist uh, uh, as you move towards constitutionalism mm. it, it, it's it's there are things that happen uh, for the longest time uh, you know when i when i was uh, 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 a law student in the uk one of the one of the early things that i learned at that time mm. of course to a large extent things have changed the UK for the longest time did not have a written constitution, or what yeah. you would call a written constitution. Yeah. But things worked. 
Because why? They didn't have a written constitution. But it was ingrained. They had a culture of constitutionalism. Absolutely. Mm. That's where we have a, a challenge and it's a big challenge. Is that something that can be gotten? I mean, it's not something that you can say, okay, I'm going to go to the shop to get some constitutionalism yeah. today. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously something that must be practiced all the yes. time. Children growing up in Absolutely. a country, Absolutely. then imbibing these attributes and these elements and even adults who don't have it today. And I think that's the question is that, <laughs> where do you get it from? How do you believe and start to insist on a system that makes sure that whether it's written down or not, you're going to practice in a certain way. You will live as a patriot in a certain way. And so some of these things don't have to be forced or insisted upon. I think, I think the, the answer to that is um, the, 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 in, in, in that sense, the constitution as a written uh, a primary law and the other laws mm. would, in, in, in my view, uh, be, be the basis, maybe, I don't know, 30% uh, or something like that, mm. towards constitutionalism. But to achieve constitutionalism, it's about the people, it's about their leaders, and it's, it's about... Uh, uh, the value system. Thank you. Mm. It, that, 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 that's, that's what it's about. And sadly, I remember when I was still uh, the tail end of, of uh, uh, my uh, tenure at CIC, you know, I remember a time when the, the, somebody had done some, some this, this uh, uh, research uh, and, and um, come up with, with, with you know, young people and 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 uh, come up with the the conclusion that uh, young people in Kenya did not see anything wrong with corruption uh if they could get away with it mm. as it happened that week I, I i had an opportunity to address uh, students of from one of the private universities <laughs> in the cbd mm. And I put that to them, and to my shock and horror, they confirmed it. That their concern is, you know, can I get away with it? Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so that it's so wrong. We, yeah. So, so when you when you're talking about things like uh, corruption, so mm. we may have the most perfect law. We don't, yep. but we could uh, have the most perfect law as as regards uh, 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 you know how to uh, tackle corruption but it is going to continue to be a headache this is just an example it will continue to be a headache uh, in the absence of uh, you know the 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 culture values yeah and values. thank you yeah charles nichaya thank you very much for joining Sante. us today mm. come again soon you know those days when you're around and then we can watch the telenovela together uh, uh by that the time the next time i come mm. i i will probably be uh, an expert on uh, the telenovela <laughs> <laughs> second family <laughs> Charles Nechai was the chairman of the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution. He is currently serving as a judge of the East African Court of Justice.